Hello everyone. It is time once again for Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we're in the book of Deuteronomy. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 28, a very large chapter. I have to check. I think it was 60, yeah, 68 verses. And we only made it to uh, verse 14 last time, which is okay. This is a wonderful chapter, and I don't want to rush through it. And it's just the kind of chapter I like. Straightforward language from God. And so we'll pick it up in verse 15 today, Deuteronomy 28, 15. I do hope you can grab your Bible so you can follow along. Always remember, the Word of God is the most important thing on earth. And uh, it's very important for you, if possible, when we do these studies together, that you have your Bible open up in front of you so you can read the word with me. Of course, I use the King James Version. And so we'll begin in just a second. The Scripture Verse by Verse website can be found at thebibleversebyverse.com. And uh, if you love the Word of God, or if you want to get to love the Word of God, that's a good place to go because that's all that's there. 30 years of teaching, three times through the Bible, in its entirety, verse by verse can be studied at thebibleversebyverse.com using my audio Bible messages. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com. But for today, as I said, we're in Deuteronomy 28, 15. And let's pray. Lord, we ask your blessings on your word and that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, the word but is significant because he's just stated in the first 14 verses a whole list of blessings that would come upon them for obedience but but it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command you this day that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. So the curse, the curses will be the exact counterpart to what would have been the blessings that would come upon them for obedience. It will be the exact opposite if they disobey. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. In other words, the curses will be nationwide. They will cover every aspect of life, just as the blessings for obedience would be nationwide and cover every aspect of life as well. 17. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. In other words, whereas the storehouses would be full of food and they would be prosperous if they were obedient to God, the storehouses will be empty. There will be lack if they are not diso- if they are not obedient to God. Verse 18, cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your land the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. And so people will be unhealthy. The children will be unhealthy. And the, and the herds of animals, domestic animals, will be sick. They will be unhealthy. And they will be few in number. Cursed, verse 19, shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. They won't be able to run from the curse. Everything they do will be tainted by the curse of God, the curse of sin. See, what an abrupt change from the first 14 verses because there is no such thing as a spiritual DMZ. And I remember, if you remember from, from uh, uh, past wars, 
the Korean War, there is a demilitarized zone, an area there, where there's no fighting. There is no spiritual demilitarized zone. They would either be in the place of blessing or in the place of cursing. There's no in-between. Forget about this lukewarm stuff. Because if you're into lukewarmness in your walk with Jesus, you are under the curse. You're either obeying him or you're not. It's an all or nothing thing. This lukewarm stuff is disobedience. In fact, it is something that Jesus despises an awful lot. We know that from the book of Revelation where he says, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. He wants nothing to do with you. He said, I wish you were either hot or cold. Be one way or the other, but don't try to walk the fence. And that is nauseating. Nauseating to God. Nauseating to any Christian who loves Jesus too, by the way. Lukewarm Christians are nauseating to Christians who love Jesus. Preachers who don't preach the entire truth. They just give little smittens of truth now and then. Sprinkle their little talks and their entertainment or their intellectual book reports with a few Bible verses to try to make it palatable to to Christians who love Jesus. Forget it, man. It's not going to work. The only people you're going to appeal to are more lukewarm people. But that's lukewarmness. Christians who try to live with one foot in the world and one foot in Jesus, that's lukewarmness. God can't stand any of that stuff. It's rot. It's putrid. Did you ever take a, did you ever take a drink of milk and you thought it was fresh? Um, I think I have. But I don't think I even have to, to know what I would do. Especially if you got a mouthful of milk and there was chunks in there. What would you do? You would not look for a drain. No. If you had to, you would spit it all over the floor. You would spit it all over the wall. It wouldn't matter. You're just getting that out of your mouth. As fast as you possibly can. Lukewarmness to God is sour milk. He's getting it out of his mouth the moment he senses that it's there. So just don't waste your time. And there was no lukewarmness with the Israelites. They were either in or out. They were either obeying or disobeying. It's no different for you and I. And these are the curses for disobedience. 20. The Lord shall send upon you cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that you set your hand unto for to do until you be destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings whereby you have forsaken me. So if Israel, if Israel rebels, <clears throat> then one of the judgments is that nothing is going to make sense. And nothing is going to be right. And nothing is going to go right. And they're going to spend a lot of time scratching their heads, wondering what in the world went wrong. Why don't things ever work out anymore? In addition to that, there's going to be panic and mass confusion. That's going to be the rule of the day. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Sounds like a good life, doesn't it? Hey, how come Satan, when he, attempt, when he tempts us to sin, never tells us that side of the story? See, that's, that's the hook in the bait right there that he doesn't want you to see, but God wants you to see it. And so do I, and that's why we're talking about it right here. 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto you, until he has consumed you from off the land where you go to possess it. The Lord shall smite you with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew 
and they shall pursue you until you perish. I will tell you this. This is all coming from God. Remember, we saw this a couple of broadcasts ago. You can do stuff in secret, but that doesn't matter. God is the one who brings the curse of sin on you for disobedience. And he sees everything. It doesn't matter if nobody else sees what you're doing. That curse is still going to be there. And if God is against you, it doesn't matter who's for you. And God warns here that diseases will hit hard both the people and the vegetation. Disease, pestilence, all sorts of horrible things to create chaos where there was once cosmos, to create disorder and suffering where there was once happiness, joy, and order. It will chase them down, and it will kill them dead. And none of it had to be. 23. And your haven that is over your head shall be, shall be brass. The heaven over your head shall be brass, which means that their prayers will not be heard. Like God will have them in a soundproof booth when it comes to prayers. They will not be heard. They will not be answered. And the earth that is under you shall be iron. In other words, it's not going to yield crops. 24. The Lord shall make the rain of your land powder and dust. No rain. He promised an abundance of rain at just the right time if they were obedient. But no rain if they're disobedient. So they're going to be doing a whole lot of farm work for nothing. A whole lot of planting, a whole lot of plowing, and not much reaping, not much harvesting. So the Lord shall make the rain of your land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon you until you be destroyed. And so we see the curses, just like the blessings, come down from heaven. If you are blessed, it is because of God. If you are blessed because of your obedience, it is because God is blessing you. If you are cursed because of disobedience, if things are going wrong, it is because God is cursing you. He's controlling it. Not the human elements in the situation, not the natural causes in the situation. He is using those things, but he is the one who is bringing these bad things on you, and it's because of your disobedience. And he says the sky is going to be like bronze. It's going to be like bronze. He won't hear your prayer. Nothing good will get out. And nothing good will get in. There will be no clouds with rain. When people would look up for rain, they're going to get a face full of dust. Verse 25. The Lord shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Sad to say this, this is exactly what happened. It happened in A.D. 70. Because they never did learn their lesson. Not completely. They came back from a 70-year captivity because of their disobedience. They came back and by the time Jesus came on the scene, they were corrupt again. And so, after rejecting their Messiah after that supreme act of disobedience of rejecting the Son of God, Titus the Roman general in 70 AD came down and completely demolished Jerusalem, completely demolished the temple, and hundreds of thousands of Jewish people were sold as slaves all over the world. 
and they remain scattered for nearly 2,000 years. They got their own homeland now. So there's no question God is doing something. But this came to pass. In essence, sin, God warns, will put the nation Israel into reverse. Instead of their enemies running in a panic, they, God's disobedient people, would be the ones who would be in a panic. Instead of winning wars, they would be losing wars. 26. And your carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air, and unto the, and unto the beast of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Complete and total defeat in battles. And the defeats will be so massive that no one will be left to give the dead soldiers even a decent burial. What you're looking at here for disobedience to God is out and out slaughter. And it all happened because this is the this is the road that they eventually took. And it all happened. All of God's warnings came to pass. And this is why the New Testament says that the Old Testament was written for our example, for our learning, so that we don't make the same sinful mistakes that the Israelites do and suffer like consequences. Nothing has changed. You can't get away. You won't get away with sin. And if you play with it, you're not playing with anything. You're indulging in it. And you will reap trouble. You say, but I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I don't care what you are. So am I. There is a temporal punishment for sin. There are natural consequences for sin. And whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And you throw all those things into the mix. And you better not take sin lightly, even if you are a Christian. 27, the Lord will smite you with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch whereof you cannot be healed. You know that the Lord controls diseases, don't you? And he controls sickness. He says so here. Oh, what a sickening, disgusting existence for Israel if they disobey God, which they will. And we learn from this that God clearly is no respecter of persons. If you obey him, he's your friend. If you obey him, he will be kind to you. He will reward your obedience. But if you rebel, watch out. <clears throat> His curse hits one as easily as it hits another. And so God would strike Israel with the same, notice, the same sickening, disgusting physical problems with which he struck Egypt. He's no respecter of persons. You do it, you're going to get it. You do, you do obedience, you're going to get blessing. No matter who you are, no matter what your race may be. God is colorblind when it comes to races, believe me. He doesn't favor anyone. You do obedience, you get blessing. You do disobedience, you get curses. It's that simple. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite you with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart, fear, tremendous fear, even to the point of insanity. Your situation will drive you mad. You'll snap. Israel, Israel if they continue in disobedience to God, their minds will be warped. You know the mind is connected to the, to the soul. In fact, the mind is a part of the soul. And the mind and the soul are connected to the spirit. 
And if you are corrupt spiritually, it's going to corrupt your mind, your emotions, and your will. The whole work's going to be corrupt. And Israel would become a nation of deranged lunatics. One flew over the cuckoo's nest will be the norm. So for disobeying God, they will become a nation of lunatics. Verse 29. And you shall grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness, and you shall not prosper in your ways. And you shall only and you shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save you. Again, we see that if God is against us, it doesn't matter who might sympathize with you, they're not going to be able to help you. And Israel, if they continue in their sin, will become a kingdom of losers. Everyone will hurt them. Everyone will steal from them. They could write a bestseller. How to fail without even trying. Or we'll just disobey God. Verse 30. You shall betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. You shall build an house, and you shall not dwell therein. You shall plant a vineyard, and shall not gather the grapes thereof. So, all your plans will come to naught. All your work will be for nothing. 31. Your ox shall be slain before your eyes. And you shall not eat thereof. Your ass shall be violently taken away from before your face and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given unto your enemies and you shall have none to rescue them. In other words, you're going to be helpless before your enemies. You know, God was the only reason that Israel won any wars. They never were very good fighters. And the absence of God is why they will lose all their wars. And no other nation, even if they had a mind to help them, will be able to help them. Because if God is against you, who can be for you? Well, a lot of people can be, but it doesn't matter. It won't do, it won't do you any good. 33. The fruit of your land and all your labors shall a nation which you know not eat up. And you shall only you shall be only oppressed and crushed always. So again, your work is going to be for nothing. All wasted. Thirty five. The Lord shall smite you in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of your foot unto the top of your head. So instead of giving them health for obedience, God would give them sickness, disease, sores for disobedience. And all the things described in these previous few verses are the result of losing wars. Livestock, children, produce are all taken away as plunder. And none of this need happen. If Israel doesn't walk away from their number one, all-powerful warrior, Almighty God, he's their champion. He's their hero. He'll take care of business. But if they walk away from him, what are they doing? They're walking away from victory. They're walking away from health. They're walking away from prosperity. They're walking away from everything good. And the only thing that's left is bad. Bad in abundance. 36. The Lord shall bring you and your king which you shall set over you unto a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there shall you serve other gods, wood and stone. And this is exactly what happened. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword 
among all nations where the Lord shall lead you. If Israel doesn't voluntarily serve the true God, then they will be forced to serve false gods. Instead of being the world's leader, they will become the brunt of the world's ridicule. And they will be picked on, and they will be tortured, and they will be abused, and they will be used, and they will be slaves to foreign heathen nations and their gods, so-called. Um, let's see. You know what? I think we shall stop right here for today. Ah, let's take let's take a couple more verses. We got some time here, just a couple of minutes. Verse thirty eight. You shall carry much seed out into the field, and you shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. So again, we see this over and over again. They're working hard. They're working hard. They're, their hard work is trying to make up for their lack of piety, but it produces absolutely nothing. It's wasted. You shall plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. So you can't accuse them of being lazy. They worked hard. This is not going to do them any good. Worms are going to eat their produce. 40. You shall have olive trees throughout all your coast, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olive shall cast its his fruit. It's not going to bring the trees aren't going to bring forth fruit. Verse 41. You shall beget sons and daughters, but you shall not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. They're going to be stolen by heathen nations and taken as slaves. By the heathens. Can you just imagine the horror of any God-fearing parents anyway? But I think any parent. Even if you don't know the Lord, I mean, it's still natural to want to be with your children and protect them. But they'll, they'll be taken away from them. What a nightmare. 42. All your trees and the fruit of your land shall the locusts consume. They're not going to consume it. The locusts will. Man, a oh man. You can add crop failure, economic depression to the list of bad things that will happen to disobedient Israel. They're going to work hard. They're going to try their best. But God's going to frustrate them at every turn. And take their children too. It's be like trying to win at target shooting by firing blanks. Well, we're going to stop. But you can continue studying. I hope you do at thebibleversebyverse.com. Check it out. Study the Bible at your convenience, at your pace, using my audio Bible commentaries at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if the Word of God blesses you, remember, I'm not underwritten by a large church or denomination. For 30 years, this has been a faith ministry, which means that I depend on individuals who love God's Word and like the fact that I proclaim it clearly without watering any of it down. Without skipping any of it either, by the way, Genesis to Revelation, verse by verse, even the unpleasant part, even the stuff that makes both you and I squirm with conviction. Because if we don't squirm, if the, if the word of God isn't given out clearly enough to make us squirm when we should be squirming because of disobedience, then it's not being given out clearly enough to bless us and to make us just love Jesus with all of our heart, soul, and mind and strength when we are obedient. It goes both ways, you see. Doesn't pay to water down the Word of God, and you know that I don't. And if you want to be a part of this ministry and bless this ministry, you can give in a secure method at thebibleversebyverse.com by simply donating or clicking the donate button at the top of the front page and giving as the Lord may lead. Otherwise, you can write Scripture verse by verse, Post Office Box 434, Port Washington, Wisconsin, 53074. That's Scripture verse by verse. Post Office Box 434, Port Washington, Wisconsin, zip code 53074. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.